Listen, man, before we move into your acting career, we got this little thing that AG and I do, man. It's called halftime. Yeah. And what we want to do is we want to throw some quick hitters at you. Okay. And uh, we want to see we want to see what you think. So I'm gonna hit you with uh these five first quick hitters. Let, let me see how you bang these out. Okay. Jeopardy or Will of Fortune? Jeopardy. <laughs> All right. Oh, Jeopardy. Yeah. Sherlock, the British version, or another great British detective show. Oh Who wow. Did? Sherlock, the one with Benedict Cumberbatch? Yes. Oh, or I love another that. great British detective show, Luther. Oh, I love Luther with Idris Elba. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, man, that's tough. Can, can, can we can, can we can we do it? Can we call it a tie? I we love both of those shoes. We yeah. call it a tie. Absolutely. Let's call that a tie. But yeah, I gotta I gotta give the edge to Luther. That's the first time I became aware of uh, of Idris, and uh, what a powerful what a powerful cat he is. I love his work. But yeah. I got to go. And Benedict and uh, Martin Freeman in Sherlock. Um, yeah, Ty. That Ty, Ty goes to the runner on that one. Go to the runner. All right. Got to take you back on this one, man. Remington yeah. Steel or Columbo? Oh, I, I got to go Columbo because I, I got to do a Columbo. Um, years later, after Peter Falk had retired Columbo. Columbo was a show in the 70s. I was a child when it was on. But in the early 90s, he brought it back. And I, I had a, uh, I had a, a meeting with him. My agent at the time called me and said, sorry to go on a tangent, but this is a good story. My agent called me and said, you got a meeting with Peter Falk. He wants to see you for a Columbo. They're doing a reboot, a two hour movie. And, and I said, oh my God, I'm, I've got to meet Peter Falk. And I went in and I, I met the director, great British actor named Patrick McGowan, who was directing this, this show that he wanted me. At. And I didn't have to audition. It was just a meeting, oh. which was a big deal at the time. Like I didn't have to, I didn't have to read. I didn't have to hold a script. It was just a sit down. And so the director said, he said, uh, I think, I think we found our guy. I think you're going to be our guy. He gets on the phone, pushes a button. He says, Peter, I think we found our, our Roger Gambles was the character's name. Peter Falk walks in. He's like, how you doing, kid? Nice to see you. Uh, <laughs> welcome to, welcome to the show. He says, Pat, let's, let's give the kid a drink. And Patrick McGowan reaches into his drawer of his desk. Pulls out a bottle of Jameson whiskey, three glasses, <laughs> pours it into the glass, and he says, and Peter Fox says, here's to the first shot of the picture. <laughs> and then we all took a shot of whiskey. And I thought, man, if I could get every job like that, then yeah, life you'd is be gonna golden. Be, I'll be yes. golden. But yes. you know, I mean, yes. it only happened the one time. But Columbo all the way, because I I worked with Peter Falk for three weeks, and that dude's work ethic. Bringing revisiting a character that he'd done 25 years earlier, and he he invested every much of his heart and soul into it. Then, as a 75 year old guy, as he did probably when he was in his late 40s, early 50s, shooting that show, I have a soft spot in my heart for it, and I love Peter Hulk, Peter Falk. And uh, I, all all due respect to Pierce Brosnan and Remington Steele, a great show. I wanted to be Remington Steele when I, I wanted to be Remington <laughs> Steele. With the smarts of Colombo when I was a kid, it. but Colombo. All, right, All right, next question. SNL or SCTV? Oh, SCTV. Ooh. SCTV, yeah, Martin Short. Martin Short, John Candy. It was more, it, 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 was, it was, to me, it was smarter and more subversive. I mean, I, I I I love the early SNL stuff. I love the Belushi Aykroyd years. Yeah. I love the Eddie Murray stuff. I mean, it, it, each year has had its own kind of impactful players and and seasons. But uh, SCTV was uh, was really original. It was its own thing, and I I yeah. loved I loved Martin Short and Andrea Martin and John Candy. It was this sort of this Canadian yeah. alien thing yeah. that sort of descended upon America. Um, much the way Monty Python did and, you know, Faulty Towers. I was a yeah. huge Monty Python fan. It had a weird sort of reverence about it that I loved. So SCTV. Now this this last one, this it's it's, it's a toughie. This is oh, a tough I, one? I had, I, yeah, I had, I had a tough one with this one. I didn't. A-Team or Magnum P.I.? Oh, Magnum P.I. Magnum P.I. Uh, Magnum P.I. story. My mom did two episodes of Magnum P.I., <laughs> I got to go with her to Hawaii when I was little. The first time she shot a Magnum P.I. She played his girlfriend on one episode. 
And then wow. the sec and then the second time, if you Google her, Google when we're off the air, go Google Kathleen Nolan, and okay. you'll see like a really beautiful, beautiful redhead. Kathleen with a K, N O L A N. Beautiful redhead, my mom. Amazing. She's she's a, she's still beautiful. She's 89. She's gonna outlive us all. Wow. Um and so yeah, so she did two magnums. The second time she went back, I wasn't with her, and she ended up going hiking with her boyfriend at the time. They got lost in the woods in the in the mountains of in the mountains of Hawaii, and they ended up having to get rescued by a helicopter. They were pulled off the mountain <laughs> in uh in, in in one of those basket things. And I at the time I was sitting at home, I was at my dad's house. And I heard on the television, Screen Actors Guild President Kathleen Nolan is in Hawaii doing Magnum P.I. And she was just rescued off of a mountain by a helicopter. What? Um, <laughs> I mean, how, how many times has that happened to you? And I right. was like, oh, my God, you know, mom. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I was probably, I don't know, 17, 18 or something at the time. Wow. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't happen all the time. So uh, she got she was doing a, a second Magnum P.I. And uh and she ended up being late for work. So I, I worked with Tom Selleck on something years ago. And Tom Selleck said, yeah, your mom did two of those shows. And and uh, she went off with her boyfriend and got stuck in the woods and <laughs> held up production for two days. Held up production. So she, owes me, she owes me money. I mean, he was being funny about it. But, yeah. That's crazy. I spent it. So Magnum, Magnum P.I. Give me your three favorite Duke Blue Devil basketball players. Your three favorite. Jay Williams. Uh, wow. There's there's so many. Got to go. Uh, Jason Williams, uh, Grant. Um, you know, these, these guys, Grant, and, and I'm going to go J.J. Redick. Okay. There was something about J.J.'s. J.J. had a shot that was just, he was, he was, Good looking and fast, and just had such a beautiful, beautiful stroke. Yeah, he was fun to watch. Um, I saw him on something the other night. I saw him on Bomani Jones's show. Oh, okay. Uh, no, he was on Bob Costa's show on HBO. He was on with Bomani. He's turning into a really interesting commentary mm. commentator. But JJ had a great career. But I loved, I loved Grant Hill, man. I mean, those guys, Grant and Leitner and Hurley and yeah. Wojo, those guys came after I left Duke. I was there in '81. I was there during, you know, Gene Banks, Vince Taylor, Mike Jaminski, a different, different before era. they really rose into it in different era before they it was it's Coach K's first several years there right. before they turned into a dynasty. They really got hot in the late 80s, early 90s, obviously. But yeah. uh, and I remember when I was working in that restaurant in 2007, Grant Hill walked in to the restaurant and I was the maitre d'. Oh, my God. And he's like, he's like. Hey man, I just saw you on Law and Order the other night. And I'm like, you're Grant Hill. And I said, can I give you? Can I give you a hug? I said, I, like, I was such, you know. And he was so cool to me, and I've seen him several times. I actually went back to see a uh, two of Coach K's last games in Cameron, oh, wow. uh, and Grant was there, and uh, and he's just a super cool guy. And then Jason Williams, who is who is such a great, great, great player for Duke, and had that stupid motorcycle accident that yeah. cut oh, everything yeah. short but he was beautiful to watch i mean look it's a it's a long list i mean there's so many terrific players but yeah. i'd say those guys are probably my top three cool you can't yeah. go wrong with that at all so yeah acting is probably taking you all over everywhere what were your or what are your three favorite cities uh you lived in why filming and what you like about them chicago okay. chicago 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 <laughs> Uh, I'm not just saying that because you guys, right. uh, Chicago was a blast. It was, uh, my dad grew up in Quincy, Illinois, downstate, mm -hmm. really, uh, Quincy and, and Joliet. But when I got public enemies, it was really my first time visiting Chicago. And I was there in, I, I got there in like November and I was there until May. Wow. And I never, I thought I knew I went to high school in May in Maine. I thought I knew what cold was. I didn't know what cold was. <laughs> no, you did. I didn't. I mean, it was cold. It would cut you like a razor, yeah. you know, walking along the, you know, the lake. And I remember going to the production office and the wardrobe lady gave us all these big puffy North Face coats. Uh, they gave all the cast members. And I remember thinking, oh, come on, it's not that cold. It was cold. Uh, but I, but I love Chicago. 
we lived we lived we stayed around the corner from uh gibson's so you know it was oh, a yeah. very kind of broy cast so it was a lot of dudes mm -hmm. so we would go out there was a lot of like carousing and fun and it was great to be with johnny we shot in appleton wisconsin all over the place but chicago was great for four and a half five months um I've done two movies in Thailand. Wow. Uh, I did one. I did uh, I, a movie in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and a movie in the south of Thailand. Had great experience. I did a movie with Owen Wilson there and Pierce Brosnan mm. uh, about five years ago. And then I did a movie for Michael Mann, uh, another movie for Michael Mann, who, who directed Public Enemies. Mm. We did a movie called Black Hat with Viola Davis and Chris Hemsworth. And we were in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia. We were in Jakarta, Shanghai. Wow. So those are some of the perks, man. Sometimes you get to be the, you know, you get to go to some really cool places. And then I work in Atlanta a lot, which I, I Atlanta has kind of become Hollywood South. Yeah. So I work in Atlanta a lot. Yeah. Um, and I love uh, New York is my second home. So I love going back home and working in New York, doing law and order, stuff like that. I'm actually going back next month. I'm going back to New York to do a play. Uh, for a couple of months, which is something I haven't done for a long time, so I'm looking forward to Man, that. Man, you got an extensive right. resume. Now, look, yeah, absolutely, you got an extensive resume. So, uh, this is my next question: Is there a role you read for and really wanted but didn't get? Oh, uh, probably, probably fifty. Um, wow. And going back to the, I mean, you know, going back to the rejection thing. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I was in the running for that I really, really wanted. And, you know, you have to, once you get over that initial heartbreak and the rejection, you just, you gotta, you gotta take the, now I go in to read for something and I take the script and put in the circular file on my way out the door. You can't think about it too much because you, you, you hope that another one's going to come along right. the next day. Um, yeah, probably guys, there are probably a lot of roles that, but I, I've, I, I have happily, I've forgotten them. Uh, but there's probably a lot of roles that I read for that I that I didn't get, but there's a lot of roles that yeah, I did. Hey, hey. So hey, well. I'm you great. Know, I'm grateful for that. That, that just reminds me. You know, me I of... got two behind me. I got the Tarantino film, and yeah. that's me playing Sean Hannity in Bombshell. <laughs> uh, I've got. I've been very. I've been very lucky. I've been. I've. I've got to do a lot of good. Good stuff. So I'm. I feel very fortunate. You know what? You, what you just said just reminds me of what we tell athletes. Hey man, you gotta forget yeah. that last miss. <laughs> you can't stay there. That's it. You gotta keep, you that's gotta, it. Hey, that's over with. So my next question for yeah. you are: Are you one of those actors that gotta have certain things in your dressing room? And if so, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I have. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen. When I got the gig, I. I went online. I bought every kind of Chick Hearn memorabilia I could find. So I got a Chick Hearn mm. jersey. I got Chick Hearn t-shirts. I have, you know, you call them, they're like talismans. They're yeah. like little little things. So when I'm in a dressing room, when I'm in my trailer on set, I've got all my little Chick right. things. And I've got a great, I got a great picture of him uh, that I have on my dressing yeah. room mirror. So as I'm, you know, they put the makeup yeah. on. If you've seen me in the show, you know, I don't look anything right. like this. I'm in... Full prosthetics, three hours of makeup to wow. put the nose, the hair, the wow. cheeks, the chin, all of that. So once all of that is on my face and I become Chick Hearn, I go into the trailer and I see the pictures uh -huh. of him. And then I turn on the headphones and I listen to him and I get him in my voice. And I got to a point after a certain time, I could, I would turn, turn on a, a Lakers game on YouTube and I would turn the sound down and I would just be calling the games without the sound wow. as Chick oh. Hearn, just in my trailer, just to just to get that yeah. in my body, just to feel that. And then I would walk onto the soundstage and all of a sudden I'm talking like this and it's magic to Kareem. <laughs> yes. You know, yes, yes. the game is in the refrigerator, the lights are out, the <laughs> door is closed, the jello is jiggling. <laughs> so I love it, I love it. Did you guys are do you guys you guys knew who Chick yeah. was, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean like all of his all of his catchphrases, yep. all of his chickisms, oh. the mustard is off the hot dog. Yeah, uh, yeah, all of them. But uh, somebody said, uh, so many people asked me on Twitter, um, "Are are we going to hear the game is in the refrigerator, the lights are out, the jello, the door is closed, the butter's cooling, the eggs are getting hard, and the jello is jiggling?" And I said, "You are going to hear it a lot." A lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, the mustard is off the hot dog. We got, we got. I, he had like two hundred yeah. of them. I mean, he called 3,338 games over 41 years. The man was incredibly yeah. prolific. So, uh, 
This is here. I, I thought I'd show you guys this. You'd get a kick out of this. This is John C. Riley, national treasure, John C. Uh. Riley, who plays Jerry Buss. This was his rap gift to all of us. He gave all of us uh 1979 Lakers championship wow. ring. And inside there, you can't see it. And it says uh, Spencer Garrett, Chick Hearn. <laughs> but he had these made for all of the cast really? members. Pretty cool. So that's that's going on my oh, dressing yeah. room table. I wear this. I wear this on the show as wow. Chick Hearn. I wear I wear a, a prop version of this. Okay. This is my this is my gift from John. But uh, so this is going to go on my dressing room table. Uh, you know, just little things to remind you of uh, wh why we why right, we love doing. Right. It. Mm -hmm. Now, when I know you, you know you're in the business. So, who are some of your favorite actors to watch as a fan? Oh gosh, I love. Uh, I mean, my first big movie movie was uh, Air Force One. So Harrison Ford, I gotta say. Uh, I love Meryl Streep. I love, uh, uh, gosh, P Peter Falk, um, Dustin Hoffman, Al Pacino, Gene Hackman, Robert Duvall. Mm. Uh, I got, I, I got to give it to, uh, to my man, Fish, Fishburne, who's been a, a role model and an inspiration to me. Um, certainly Denzel. Um, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, uh, I, I think I mentioned Meryl Streep, Glenn Close, even going back. To the early days, uh, Spencer Tracy, who was, you guys, I mean, I'm sure you've heard the name. He was my namesake, um, one of the greatest actors of all time, one of the greatest film actors of all time. So he's a big inspiration to me. So, um, yeah, I'm also just a huge movie junkie. So going back and watching Turner Classic mm -hmm. movies and the old black and white stuff. And I love French films and Italian films. And so there's a lot of French actors that I love. Uh, Marcello Mastroianni, great Italian actor. Uh, Jean-Paul Belmondo, great French actor. You, I learn a lot from other, you know, from other cultures and other other filmmakers as well. So uh, I love American films, but I also love Japanese and Italian and German films and all of it. So I, I mean, I grew up watching all that stuff. I would come home from school and I would turn on the TV while my mom was off on a set somewhere, and I'd and I'd wow. watch movies all day. So it's not not that surprising that uh, that I ended up. <laughs> 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 